स्मार्ट हो रहा है इंडिया जैसे इंडिया में बना एलिस्टा स्मार्ट एलईडी टीवी विद वर्ल्ड क्लास क्लैरिटी एंड अमेजिंग फीचर्स The Ashes has been so great so far. Let's start by talking about that epic chase in Bristol. How was the dressing room feeling like when Heather Knight and Kate Cross was going at it during that late stages? Oh of- yeah, yeah. Obviously, it was it was an amazing win, and I think the way Heather kind of uh, marshaled the the middle overs and got us to a position where uh, we had one set batter in at the end was really important, and the way Crossy came in and played with freedom and um, Yeah, I mean they were both brilliant, and I think you could kind of see by our reaction in the dugout or whether it was up top just how much it meant to us to to get over the line in that game. So no, it was brilliant. Yeah, and that a cross scoop shot. Yeah, Crossy loves the scoop, doesn't she? Um, no, I think it just shows that um, as a team we're really kind of embodying that brave mindset of playing to our strengths, and um, Crossy was a fine example of that um, at the game. Let's talk about the Ashes campaign so far. Uh, uh, after the first T20 Ashes, you guys had to win all the matches, and so far you guys have been doing good. And in the final T20 fixture, uh, you were not uh, having form. Then you came good in that Lords game uh, to help uh, England win that match. So how was that feeling when you scored that 46 of 23 balls? Yeah, obviously, like you said, kind of up the edge, best, and uh, all of the games have been must win, which. I think just makes it pretty simple in in our camp, um, and we've just been taking each game as they come. Obviously, going to Lords kind of you've got the the history um, of it, but also we we really saw an opportunity to win a kind of mini series in itself of the T20s. Um, and yeah, obviously I was delighted to kind of contribute to the team, and uh, yeah, it was it was a great win. So no, it was it was it was great. What was it like beating Australia, being the first team since 2017 to beat Australia in any format in a series? Yeah, it obviously you can take a lot of confidence from it. They've been a very successful team over the last six, seven years now, and um, yeah, obviously it's it's a great achievement. Um, but also we've got the bigger pictures to think about, and we're we're just trying to keep it really simple. We're not we're not t- thinking too far ahead. Um, it's just about ticking off each game. Um, but no, it was a it was a really uh, cool, I guess, achievement to be a part of. Um, and I think especially some of the players who have been around a bit longer, they've obviously been a part of a lot more Ashes where it necessarily hasn't gone our way. So um, yeah, it was it was a huge moment for the team and um, a series that we really enjoyed and uh, we'll take a lot of confidence from um, going into this ODI series. Yeah, on that note, the series has been very close for it, and regardless of how it finishes, England have been competing with Australia in a while do in in recently recent times. So, do you think the gap is getting closer, and especially with England and Australia? Yeah, I think you kind of look at the series. It's been a series of nail biters, really, hasn't it? Uh, you look at the Test match; it could have gone either way, and then Edge Baston. All of the games have have come down to kind of. The final few overs, or, or the last ball, which has been brilliant, and I think it shows that kind of coming into this series, we spoke a lot about competing with the Aussies. They've they've been the leading team for for so long now that we've had to change how we do things to kind of match up to them, really. So it, it's kind of we're we're playing catch up at the moment, and I think uh, the really pleasing thing about it is that we are competing. And look, they're the world best side, and. Um, We've we've now won three games in a row. The Ashes so far have been sold out at all the venues. Some of the iconic venues you guys have been playing. So how do you look at this evolution of women's cricket, where all the games can be sold out, all the games can be marketed, and families, people, child, children, everyone turn up to watch you guys play? Yeah, it's been brilliant. I think you look at how kind of the progression of the women's game has come on. In I think really the last three four years when we we started with. five regional players being professionalized um and yeah you've seen kind of the impact that the hundreds had and the impact it's had on regional cricket you you've seen kind of the the increase in standard and just the the standard go up where actually there's now a lot more pressure on england places which is brilliant and it's where you want kind of your country to be at um because you know that you you can't you can't kind of 
lay on your laurels as an England player, there's someone coming up behind you. And I think that just that just pushes you on as a player a little bit further. And like you said, um, it's, it's amazing that all the ODIs have been completely sold out. You you also look at kind of Edge Bass and the Oval and um, Lords, they were all record breaking crowds that they just kept on beating each other. And it was brilliant. And to be a part of that as a player and kind of to just see it evolve and I guess I look back at three, four years ago when I was playing regional cricket and that there was only 150 people in the crowd and that was all parents and family family and friends. So to then walk out at Bristol where it was a it was sold out um, and to come to the Aegeus on Sunday and then Taunton on Tuesday where they're all sold out, um, it's just brilliant and it shows that there, there is an interest in women's cricket and um, that's something that we want to push as players. We want to entertain and we want to inspire um, and get more people involved in the game, which is which is what we're doing. And uh, this is the first kind of couple of steps and there's still so much more to do, but um, no, it's really pleasing as a player to kind of see that. So now let's talk about a little bit about you. So how does it feel to be the baby of the team? <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It's I've kind of always been the baby of whatever group I'm playing in. So. Uh, it's kind of just part and parcel, but I think for me, kind of the whole team, um, everyone gets along so well um, and it doesn't really matter what age you are. You've got a couple of us youngsters in me, Wongi, Kempi, but like you look at the team and we've got best mates who are, who are older than us and we just gel really well. And I think you see that on the pitch as well, especially in this Ashes series. We've really enjoyed being on the pitch together. So yeah, it, it's always nice. and. Um, yeah. So you have been tagged as a prodigy right from a young age, and uh, but you don't seem to be uh, letting that burden you and continue to play freely. What's the secret of that? Oh, I think kind of especially my upbringing. I've, I'm the youngest of five, so um, I'm kind of used to being being the youngster and kind of having to fight for for whatever it is, whether it's the TV remote or the front seat in the car. So. Um, yeah, I think that kind of shapes you as a person. Um, I also kind of look back at the opportunities I was given at, say, 14 to make my Surrey Women's debut um, and just how it's evolved throughout my career, whether it's playing regional cricket, um, getting my professional contract at 16, the 100, things like that. Um, you kind of just have to take it in stride. And I think the pleasing thing for me is that I, I've kind of, whatever environment I've gone into, everyone's backed me fully. Um, uh, whether I'm 18 or not, they've, they've given me the full backing, which I think is really important at whatever age you're at. Um, and it just gives you that confidence to go out onto the pitch and perform the best you can um, and just play with as much freedom and um, express yourself as much as possible. How that professional contract and uh, regional structure has helped players like you, not just the younger players, but the players who have been playing for a long time now, and now has that uh, domestic cricket structure to go back on. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. Um, whether it's for a younger player like myself um, or kind of the players who are kind of maybe a little bit older and have been a part of it for a bit longer, they, they now have a regional structure to fall back on. And kind of what is amazing is that you can play regional cricket and that can be your job. And you don't have like if you don't want to play for England, you don't have to, um, which is incredible. And I think um, like I've said it before, the standard has just skyrocketed, um, and I think you'll just keep on seeing that, seeing that progress, which is brilliant. And I think the more games we can play as England players in the regional and domestic um, competitions, the the higher the standard is going to raise. And kind of what you want is kind of all your regional players, the best regional players, playing against each other and pushing each other to to be better and get those spots. So no, it's been outstanding. Smart Hora India. Jesse India may bana Alistair Smart LED TV with world class clarity and amazing features.